What's up YouTube, Dom Kirby here. Are you a Microsoft 365 user? If you are, have you tried Outlook on the web yet? Outlook on the web has come a long way since the Outlook web app days. In this video, I wanna share some tips and tricks that I use because I use Outlook web app on the daily. In fact, I haven't used desktop Outlook in quite a while. Let's check it out. All right, so this is Outlook on the web in Microsoft 365. Now, of course, I can't use my um, production Outlook, the one I use every day. So this is one of my trusty demo tenants that I'm going to show you here today. It's relatively fresh, so it's a good starting point to show you some of the tips and tricks that I use. So you can see it looks a lot like Outlook. In fact, they're building on Outlook desktop and getting it closer to this. Uh, I think we'll see that the ultimate transition is, is pushing towards web apps. So the first thing you notice here is this yellow bar, and I'm a huge fan of this. And with supported browsers such as Edge, I can actually use this right here and hit try it now. And what that'll do is it'll change my mail to handler to Outlook on the web. So basically Windows uses Edge and Edge uses Outlook on the web to send a message. So that's a super neat trick. Works with mail to links anywhere in your operating system. Uh, and it's a surefire way to make the transition easy. Now, the next thing I'm going to suggest is that you install Outlook on the web as a progressive web app. And a progressive web app is literally just a web app that performs or behaves more like an application in Windows. So you got this, you can see I have this little um, Outlook um, icon down here, my taskbar, just like if I, I would if I had desktop Outlook. I'm not going to click it because that's my work email, but uh, you can see it looks just like an app. And that's exactly how it'll function. It'll be this in an app style window. So that way I launch Outlook just like I always used to. Um, the next step, I'm a huge fan of dark mode. So we're going to go up here to the settings and we're going to turn that on right now because my eyes are burning. So you can see dark mode, classic dark mode works really well. I'm a huge fan. So let's talk about kind of organizing things, right? You have your folders just like you have in conventional Outlook. So that's good. Um, and as we kind of work through here. This is a, a pretty plain mailbox. You can see I've got like a, a Gmail stuff folder from an old migration and that kind of thing going on. Um, and then of course we have our typical message list and then we have our reading panes, just like an Outlook. But also just like an Outlook, I can reorganize a lot of this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to the settings here. And I've got themes. These themes apply globally across the Microsoft 365 platform. So if you're in SharePoint or whatever, you'll get this look. That's kind of a nice touch. Uh, you already saw me turn on dark mode. If you're not a focused inbox person, no problem, we'll turn it off. Um, personally, I've actually adapted a lot to focus inbox. Desktop notifications is another big one, right? Desktop notifications uh, are really important because we need to know when we get an email. So this, again, brings some desktop-like functionality into Outlook on the web. And the way it does that is through browser-based notifications. So I would click this, I'll get a little prompt up here. I accept it, and then I get email notifications from the browser just like that. All right, next is display density. So um, you've got full, medium, and compact. I use compact personally. It's really up to you. Um, conversation view, if you're not a conversation view person uh, where messages are threaded in groups, you can turn that off or change the way it works. And then finally, reading pane. I'm a show on the bottom reading pane kind of guy most of the time, so that's typically how I have it set. And you can see with that compact view, I really see a lot of data uh, in one view. And then of course I can drag this and sort of rearrange things if I choose. Uh, next, I'm gonna go to view all Outlook settings and this is where the real meat and potatoes are, right? So again, I can customize this layout. Um, I can get a little more um, data, a little less data, kind of organize how I want things done. Of course, you can turn off the reading pane, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely run through this. And then compose and reply is where we set our signatures. Now it's relatively new, but I can actually have multiple signatures, right? So we'll say signature one, right? We'll set that up there. Uh, and I can always set signatures for replies uh, and signatures for new messages, all just the same. Looks like we had a little bug there, right? Um, if I keep going, I can always show the BCC. That's another one I use because I BCC quite a bit. You can also show from if you send from multiple emails. I can set a default reply. So a lot of customization through here 
as you kind of go through it. Undo send is another one I use a lot, and I typically set this to five seconds, and that means uh, it, it doesn't like remove the message, right? But what me that means is it's going to delay five seconds before it sends the message. So maybe if I hit send on the wrong message or something like that, I can hit undo before it actually sends. Quick suggestions is another huge thing, um, and I'll show you how that works in a moment. So is text predictions. Um, I'm going to discard these settings for now. So I've got different uh, sharing options and how I handle attachments. So that's really neat. Um, but if we go through here, rules. If you're an Outlook user, you've probably used rules at some point. So just like an Outlook, I can build rules based on all kinds of conditions, subjects, senders, uh, recipients. Am I on the CC line? Um, one I like to set is I'll show you real quick. Uh, I call it unsub. And if I go to... Uh, I skip through from to and all that jazz, and I actually work in, whoops, subject or body includes, and I put unsubscribe. And then I actually pipe these out to a folder. So anything that's uh, mail subscription sort of gets bumped out, and then you can create rules that are higher priority um, if you have some that are more important. Right? So I'll move to, and I'll create. Uh, subscriptions folder. And what I do is I check this folder like a couple times a week, right? Just a couple times a week, see if there's anything important in there. Uh, I unsubscribe quite a bit. So we save these settings. Uh, sweep is awesome. I haven't created any rules yet, but I'll show you that in just a minute. Same thing, junk email, block senders list, all of that stuff is here for you, right? Um, I can come in here and set a vacation reply if I want. So a ton of different options. There's also a lot of great options in Calendar, just like in the Desktop Outlook. I use the weather and I set my location uh, so that I get sort of the next three days of weather as I'm trying to book things. It's especially helpful if I need to book in-person meetings, maybe where someone or me has to drive somewhere. Uh, I can manage shared calendars or share my calendars, so that's really cool. I can even pull in different accounts, which I'm not going to do here, but you could, you could hypothetically right, pull in your personal Microsoft email or your Gmail and check all that from here. Uh, using the calendar feature. So a lot of different cool stuff. One thing I wanted to call out was the shortened duration for all events. Now I'm a big fan of meeting breathing room, right? Even if I just have to go to the bathroom or something. So I can end events early by five minutes or by 10 minutes, depending on the length of the meeting. And that is a really cool feature because it automatically creates breathing room in your calendar. And then finally, people, we're really just sorting how we show contacts, right? So with that in mind, let me show you Sweep. And I am going to do Microsoft 365 Message Center. I get a ton of these because I'm a admin of this demo tenant here, right? So I'm going to sweep these. I'm going to say this can be a one-time thing. So I'm going to move all messages to delete it. Or this can be an anytime thing, right? So just like creating a folder rule, this sort of automates that process for you. And of course, I can pick the folder. So I'm going to call it message center messages um, but I can also keep the latest message which is super handy right maybe I get a for example I get the CISA weekly email right and in that email I keep the latest one and archive the rest automatically uh, and then I can do by age so messages older than 10 days get moved so I'm gonna do that one and it'll actually create a rule and then go in here and view sweep rules and you'll see it's gonna move all email older than 10 days to message center messages. So that's really cool. Um, so new message, just like normal, right? I can draft an email here and I can drop signatures in there. I actually didn't save those settings, but that's okay. Um, if you have business premium or plans that include AIP, I've got encrypt here. I've got all my different formatting options. It's very easy to do email and signatures and things like that. Uh, and then working down, that's really about it. That's sort of my baseline for customizing how I use Outlook on the web. And the key message I want to drive here is that you really want to figure out how to do it for yourself, right? It's fully customizable just like Outlook is. Of course, I've got calendars and contacts. Um, it's got full integration with To-Do, which I'm a very, very big fan of uh, over old school Outlook tasks. So that's pretty awesome. We'll go back to mail here. Um, calendars, right? 
just like your normal Outlook calendar. I've got all kinds of different views, work week, next three days, um, board, which I'll create a separate video on because that's a really cool concept. Uh, and then just like if I wanted to access a coworker's calendar, I can do add from directory uh, and we'll pick on Alex here and I'll add his calendar. So now I can see his calendar and my calendar. And then as far as bookings are concerned, if I want to book someone, I'll pick on Alex again. Now these this is a demo tenant, so there's uh, there's no action going on in these calendars, but you could see just like an Outlook, I've got a nice scheduling assistant. But I've also got these suggestions here, right? And that'll suggest the next few three times for everyone in the group, right? So if I'm booking multiple people, it'll typically pop up about three suggestions. Now, sometimes I need to book like extra busy people and it doesn't quite work out. So I do need to use scheduling assistant. Um, and of course, I can create a Teams meeting right in here. So definitely give it a shot and let me know down in the comments how it works out for you because I'm pretty curious. I definitely am a huge advocate for using Outlook on the web over Outlook desktop. And if you have any of your own tips and tricks, drop them in the comments below and let's help everyone succeed. Thanks a lot and we'll see you on the next one.